Great are you, Lord. Well, I wonder how many, just a little bit of feedback. I just wonder how many, don't have to raise your hand, but how many prayed a bold prayer this last week, huh? Just ask yourself. We talked about bold prayers last week. I wonder how many prayed a bold prayer last week. The Bible talks to us. It tells us that we can come boldly before the throne of grace. Amen. And when we really realize that nothing overwhelms God, and he knows us anyway before we even think about praying, He's going to be okay, all right? He's going to be okay with what we bring to him in prayer. We're going to go week number two. I'm going to talk about prayer again today. We're going to talk about it again today. And then tonight we're going to come together and we're going to have a time. um, I think it's going to be very, 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 very special. Last week I might have asked the question, you know, um, regarding your prayer life and, you know, how many think you're praying too much. I never had any hands that go up. Nobody said, yeah, Pastor, I'm praying way too much. (laughs) Maybe your background was a background where you didn't hear any prayers. Maybe the only prayers you ever, ever heard or even thought about was when you heard a minister pray. So we all come from different walks of life. So it's one of those things where, you know, around our house, we always prayed for our food before we ate. And, um, you know, it's just, um, that's become, a, that's become a, I don't want it to be a habit. I want it to be meaningful. But I still pray for my food before I eat it. And, um, it's not just to bow my head so somebody next door says, oh, looky there, they're a Christian. But um, it's because we're truly thankful. But obviously, there's way more things to pray about than our food. And I know that we do that. We pray for protection. We <clears throat> thank God for his goodness. And had a, a friend of mine, he was, um, he gave the illustration when he, when he, he got saved and he went back to school and um, I guess the basketball team or wherever he was at, they, they got word that Don, got, Don Crooks got saved. So they were getting ready to have a, have a meal or whatever and they said, okay. They said, Mr. Don, Brother Don or whatever they called him, he's going he's gonna to pray for our food before we eat. And um, <clears throat> Don was thinking, on his feet. He probably thought about this ahead of time. I never asked him if he did or not. But um, he said, okay, let's bow our heads. He said, Lord, bless this bunch as we eat this lunch. Amen. (laughs) So uh, anyway, he got his way. He was able to to pray for his food. And uh, he was obviously a young, young Christian. And he was uh, also able to, um, to be a shining light for Jesus Christ. So anyway, Prayers that we pray, all those safe prayers, you know, just safe prayers, you know. Um, and sometimes we say things that I don't want to say we don't mean them, but I think sometimes if we're not careful, we can just be reciting things in our prayer that we maybe haven't completely, totally thought through. But we have an example back in the Old Testament of Samuel. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, we have a passage of Scripture that I'm going to let be the story and the backdrop for the three blanks that you're going to fill in here after a while. Okay? So let's go back and uh, let me just tell you a little bit about this story um, and the context of where we are with Samuel. Okay? He worked for priest Eli. That was his boss. And uh, Eli was not a real good guy. Eli was not a guy that really honored God, and neither did his family, okay? 
Um, but um, here's Samuel. Scholars think he was somewhere maybe fifth grade, 12 years old possibly. Um, so here he is um, working for priest Eli. And um, he went to bed and uh, he hears this voice that says, Samuel, Samuel, Samuel. And he runs, and he runs over to the priest, and he said, did you call me? He said, no, I didn't call you. He said, go back, lay back down. So he lays back down, and it wasn't long, and he hears it again. Samuel, Samuel. And he gets back up, and he runs over to the priest. He, he said, did you call me? He said, no. He says, I didn't call you. He said, okay, so it happened three times. And the priest said, he said I tell you what. He said, the next time. The next time you hear him, just listen. And in verse 10, here's what happened. And the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, Samuel replied a prayer, really, he didn't really realize how unsafe it was. We're talking about unsafe prayers. We're talking about prayers that, you know, maybe we would rather not pray them, but, but we're going to pray them, you know. So, he, you know, here he is. He prays this unsafe prayer back, and he says simply this. Speak. Your servant is listening. Simple words, only a few words. But Samuel replied, speak, your servant is listening. God spoke. Samuel heard his voice. I think it's a pretty cool story. It really is. It's a very, very cool story. The problem is God was saying something to Samuel that we're going to talk about after a while. You know, that matter of fact, Samuel did not know what he was in for. I don't know how many times you have prayed a prayer or said, Lord, speak. I'm listening. And in saying that, in saying that, you don't have any real clue as to what it might involve. I think say prayers are those prayers that we almost know what's involved. But the unsafe prayers, and that's why we call them unsafe, because we don't like to pray them. Those prayers that we would, you know, they're uncomfortable, but, we, but we're going to pray them anyway because we know it's the right thing to do. But as we, as we think about that, as we think about those prayers, we think, wow, wow, what might come as a result of this? Well, we have some Bible trivia uh, that we can, we can play right now. Let's go to two or three of those. I don't have the music playing or anything, but here we go. There are times throughout the Word of God, okay, that God spoke and he gave the assignment. And the question was, in this Bible trivia that we're going to go through, and, and you know, the question, was it easy? When God spoke, when God spoke and gave the assignment, was it always easy? And really, we could probably say it was never, never easy. Let's go through. Noah built the ark. Wow. What's an ark? Oh, it's a boat about the size of a football field plus another half one, about a one and a half football field. That's how big the ark is. I remember when Ken did the youth, uh, the, the kids ministry. And uh, he came in here and uh, he got a ladder, went up on the roof of this church. And he went back here to the peak and he put a flag or something up there. And then he stretched a string clear down across over to the field and clear back. And what he was doing, he was wanting the kids to see just how big this ark was as he was talking about the ark. So here we are, we got Noah. He was told to build an ark. Didn't even know what an ark was. But it was a very, very tough.
tough assignment. He was ridiculed and all the things that took place regarding his assignment that God gave. He answered the call. He answered the call. The assignment wasn't easy. Jonah, God spoke to him and told him to go to Nineveh. And it was the most godless, violent city in the world. And um, he told them, you, you're going to have to repent or you're going to die. What an assignment he had. Wasn't easy, but he did it. Think of Mary. The angel comes to Mary and says, um, I know you're a virgin, but you're going to have a baby. And um, matter of fact, it's going, to be the, it's going to be the son of God. Wasn't easy. She was ridiculed, but it was an assignment from God. So I'm saying this, in this whole thing of praying and taking time, taking time to say, Lord, speak. Maybe after this message, you'll say, I'll never, ever <laughs> ask the Lord to speak to me. I'm just going to kind of speak to him, and then I think maybe I'll know what he wants me to do as I talk to him. And I think that's what we do, a lot of us, with our prayer life anyway. Maybe there's been times in our life that we have. We pray our prayers, and, and in praying our prayer, we're almost helping God out. Have you ever talked to people that have helped God out in their prayer life? Now, Lord, I know what's going on here, and, 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 and just let me help you out. Let me, let, let, me, let me just explain what all is going on. It's not just my husband's having a problem with me, and it's not just my kids, and it's not just, you know. So, so I, I, I want you just to kind of see this whole picture. And God's saying, uh, are you done? <laughs> what is it? Many times in our prayer life, we like to pray those saved prayers. And we like, to, we, like to, we like to just keep talking to God and telling him these things that we, oh, we've all done it. I've done it so many times. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing the times, you know, throughout my past and my younger Christian life where I was trying to help God out all the time. And I was doing it through my prayer life. But I wasn't saying speak. I'm listening. Matter of fact, we were doing the opposite. Whenever we get in prayer and we know, of course, we know when people pray, they pray most, you know, for their food, for safety. And then they pray most when they're going through a tough time or they heard some bad news. Come on. It's human nature. We all do it. But my point is this. Did you know even through a hard time, you know, he can take that thing that was meant for evil and turn it out for good. You know, even through those hard times, we can wait before God because God knows what we're going through. I know this might sound silly. I believe we can wait before God and God can answer prayer and give us all that direction that we need. So here it is. Samuel, he heard the voice, you know, and he didn't say, um, he didn't say, pour out your blessings on me, Lord. I don't think he said, I need a cute future girl for my wife. And we want to have two kids, one dog, and I want my job to be at least six figures, and I want to have the number one YouTube uh, influencer that there is in the world. He wasn't praying those prayers. He just simply prayed the prayer regarding, God, I'm listening. Speak, Lord. I'm listening. So we have this whole thing with Eli and the people are sinning and God is saying, you know what? God is saying, I want you, Samuel, to be the one. I want you to be the spokesperson to help out this situation. So when we say, Lord, speak, I'm listening. Don't ask God to speak if you don't want to hear what he has to say. That would be probably the bottom line of this section here. Don't ever say, Lord, speak to me. Because I, I talk to people quite often and they say, Pastor, I, I just haven't heard from God for a long time and I, I don't know where he's at. I feel like he's, he's so far away. I don't even think he cares. I hear this. I hear this. I, I've heard this all through, all, all through my ministry. 
We call those dry times, don't we, huh? I've had some dry spells where I haven't heard from God and, and, and you, know, you wonder where he's at and whatever. But you know what? It's during those dry times that we don't live by feeling, and we shouldn't anyway, we live by faith. See, if we're saved by faith and we live by faith, we don't have to always revert to the feeling. Now, we are emotional people and we like the feeling, right? We love the feeling. We love the feeling. We want to sense what is going on. And so therefore, as we are wired with people that are emotional, we want the feeling. But you know what? We live by faith, not by sight, and we don't live by feeling. So I'm thinking this morning, there's times that we need to step back and just kind of wonder, what am I saying to God? Or what is God saying to me? So during this time of looking at this lesson, this one verse of scripture in uh, verse number 10, Let's see what God wants to say to us regarding how we can learn, and I'm using the word learn, how we can learn to hear and recognize his voice, okay? It's very simple. This will help you, and it will help you not just today, it will help you tomorrow and the days to come, all right? We're on the bottom rung. This is, a, this is as simple as I can get it. All right, I'm w- we're way down here. This is for all of us. That's where I'm at most of the time anyway, because I'm just a simple person, right? So here we are. We are, this is 101 right here. 101. How to, do I learn to hear God's voice? All right? Three words, three points that I have this morning. You can take that, you can memorize these, and you can, you can, don't even have to post them on your, on your mirror, you know, because you can memorize them. Here they are. Number one, be still. Okay? The first way to learn to hear God's voice is be still. Just be still. I just touched upon this last week just a little bit. I didn't spend much time here. But this morning, let me just walk walk us through it as we do it together. In Psalm 46, in Psalm 46, God tells the experience of his presence in God doesn't say, you know, oh, you know, I, I you know, don't, don't, don't be frantic and just don't be busy. You know, no, here's what it says. It says, be still. The scripture says, be still and know that I am God. Okay. Now, I know we all have, I know we all have times in our life that we're busy, busy, extra busy, super, super busy, certain times of the year, certain times of the month, you know, depends on how the work schedule is, depends on what's going on. I know that. We all know that. We're all busy. But folks, I promise you, I, you, can, you can take this to the bank. I promise you there's value in being still before God. I can't even explain it. I can't even, I can't even give you the full, the full, the, the full impact of, of what, what happened. When we just take some time and we're still. The radios are off. The TVs are off. The games are off. The phones are off. Maybe the lights are dimmed. Maybe our eyes are closed. Maybe they're not. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you maybe you're so still. Maybe you can hear the fly just in the room. I was sitting in my recliner yesterday. I sat down in that recliner more than once. Short periods of that was funny, wasn't it? I spent my whole birthday just sitting in my recliner, in case you were wondering. But as I walked over to the recliner and sat down and, uh, you know, prop my leg, leg up, I, I'm sitting there. Then I don't hear it, but I feel it. It's down on my leg. I can't reach it. The fly swatter is over on the table. I got it because I was going to bring it with me, but I forgot. I had a birthday. <laughs> got up again. Sit in the other recliner. A little later on. <laughs> Didn't it drive you crazy? A simple little fly? <clears throat> okay, that was yesterday. I got up early this morning, sat in the chair, 
fly swatters over on the table. The same fly. I got up. I got the fly swat. I said, this was early. This is 536. It was early. I'm surprised he was up. <laughs> I sat back down in the chair. Fly swat. Of course, they don't show up for a long time. <laughs> On the table. Oh, yeah. Missed him. <laughs> Folks, it was a long morning. It was awful, okay? I got up, got dressed, and came to church. Okay. This afternoon, when I sat in the chair, this fly saw, I, 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 here's what I told myself. I said, Rich, leave it on the end table. So that's where it's at. It's not over on the kitchen table. It's on the end table. Let me give you four or five ways that the Lord speaks. Boy, that was extra. Boy, we just walked through. God speaks through his word. He speaks through his word. God speaks through people. Okay? I didn't say all people. Some people don't listen to them. Okay? <laughs> you take a person that's not living right, not living for Jesus, don't, don't go listen to them. I don't, you know, God might be, I don't know. Anyway, uh, God speaks through people. God speaks through his circumstances that allow us to come to our lives. My goodness, the circumstances that we have. Those, oh, man, the list would go on and on. Those open doors, those closed doors, my goodness. Remember, we thought, why in the world didn't that work out? Man, I was banking on that. We was looking forward to that. No, it didn't happen, didn't happen, didn't happen. The door closed completely. God speaks through circumstances. Maybe we'll never find out why, and maybe we will find out why that door was closed or why that door was open. And number, and last but not number four, God speaks through his spirit. Oh, there's so much more to say about that. L write the word down beside that. Write this word down. This is a good word that fits this really, really good. Write the word prompted or prompting. God prompted you. It was a nudge. It was a prompting. See, I think when we're, when we're still before God and it's quiet, I think we can hear those promptings a whole lot better than when it's noisy and we're so busy and we're running so fast. He's probably saying it to us, but we don't hear him. But now we're being still before him. The promptings of the Holy Spirit, powerful, powerful, wow. So much more to say there. The more you listen during this time of stillness before God, the more you listen, the more you will recognize his voice. And that is a beautiful story. You say, well, pastor, I've never experienced that yet. Hey, listen, this week, the next seven days, the next seven days, I guarantee you, it can happen to you. When you Get quiet before God. When you get quiet before God, and the more you listen, the more you'll recognize his voice. Now, you might say, does God just speak out loud to you, Rich? Does he just, not normally. No. God doesn't normally say, Rich Hurls, go to the church at 4 o'clock this morning. He's probably not going to do it that way, right? Because he knows I probably wouldn't be of any value at 4 o'clock in the morning. So he might say, you can wait till 5.30. No, my point is this. It's not necessarily those, vo but it's the promptings. It's the promptings. We can talk more about that later. Lord, speak. I'm listening. I'm being still before you. Number two, not just be still, but be willing. Often our prayers are just prayers, like I said before, you know, keep me safe and help my headache and, and uh, help my boss not to be grumpy today. Those are all good prayers. I mean, who wants a grumpy boss? Nobody. Okay? You say, well, I'm not even a boss and I'm still grumpy. Well, nobody wants to, anybody grumpy. Nobody, 
Who wants to be around somebody that's grumpy? So, you, you know, that might be your number one prayer for the day. But, but my, my point is, you know, be, be willing, be willing not to just pray these saved prayers, but I think it could be something like this. Be willing, be willing, instead of coming to God with that long list, try this. This might be tough, but you can do it. Seven days, we can do it together. Come to God with a blank sheet. A blank sheet. Nothing on it. There's nothing on the sheet. It's all blank. And we are going to be willing to listen and do what he says. Folks, it's in those times that God speaks to us and says, you know, Rich, I'm not sure your attitude was really right when that person pulled out in front of you today. The way you responded, maybe you didn't mean it, but your, your voice maybe penetrated a disgust that didn't honor me. Yeah. Okay, Lord. Maybe the way that I reply to my kids or my loved ones or my spouse, maybe, I don't think it's bad, but, it, but somebody, somebody told me it wasn't a really good response. I didn't think it was bad, but now you're telling me during this time, Lord, I'm willing to change it. I'm willing. Be willing, okay? Now, I think we've got to be make sure that we've obeyed in the last things that he told us to do before we ask him to do some more things for us, right? Okay. Maybe we haven't followed up on what he's told us to do. And I think maybe the reason he hasn't showed us something for the future is because we didn't even do what he told us to do. Number three, be still. This is how we hear the voice of God. Be willing and number three, be ready. Let's go back to the story. God said to Eli, or to, to Samuel, Samuel, he's, I'm trusting you to carry out this message. I'm trusting you to carry out this message. Tell him, tell him that my judgment is coming and he needs to turn his heart back to me. God spoke. Samuel says, speak, I'm listening. Then he told him what to do. I think there's been way too many times that God has told us what to do. And we just didn't do it. We just didn't do it. And you know what? There's no way that we can get closer to God if we don't begin to do what he wants us to do. We're talking about how we want God to speak to us. We're talking about how, how we can be so much more purposeful with our praying, with our being still, with us being willing, and with us being ready. See, the Christian life is it's a lot of things. It's a lot of things. The Christian life, I mean, it's, it's fun. It's, it's enjoyable. It's, it's happy. It's, it's, being, it's, it's singing praise songs and having a great time. It's great fellowship times. The Christian life is, man, it's so broad. It's so broad. Can I just tell you a little secret? For whatever reason... For whatever reason, this morning, I felt so lonely. I just felt lonely. I got up, missed the fly, but I, you know, got dressed and let Reggie go outside and come back in, and I told him, I'll be back. When I tell him I'll be back, he knows he can't go with me. He, he understands those words. Did you know that? Does your dog understand words? If I say, you want to go? He's at the door. He's running. Jumping up in the car. 
But when he looks at me, I say, Reggie, I'll be back. He goes over and lays down. But I left, got out of the car and went out in the car and went out and came over here. Did what I always do, parked under the carport, came in, made sure the air conditioners were on, turned the lights on, unlocked the doors, walked throughout the church. But for some reason this morning, I just, I felt so lonely. I don't know why. I'm the most blessed person in the world. But I know this. God has blessed my life. And he began to talk to me back in that little room back there, my little study. And as I just, I think it was, I think it was really Satan trying to attack me. I really believe it was. I had no reason to feel that way. But I want to say this. There's something about God and God's people that correct that. God and God's people correct or change that feeling or whatever it might be. And as I was praying and God began to talk to me and I knew, I, and I knew he assured me it was going to be a great day. He assured me it was going to be a great crowd. He assured me it was going to be a great day. He assured me of all of that. And it has been. But I'm here to say this. God and God's people help us. I know this. I know some of you are going through some tough things right now. I could name your names and I could talk about it, tell the whole church, I'm not going to do that. You didn't give me permission to do that. I know many of you are going through some tough things right now. And you walked in here this morning and you're just all smiles and you're doing okay. You know, you know. life is brutal. Life is not fun sometimes. Had a person last week, they were not even 50, still in their 40s. And they said, you know what? I'm almost praying, come, Lord Jesus, come. Things aren't pretty. And they always haven't been pretty. But I'm here to say this. There's a lot of stuff going on. Some of you have lost loved ones. I look here, there was two or three funerals this last week. There's a void in your life right now. Maybe some of you, you know, with school starting and, and, and all this going on, all the things that, that we have to go through and all, all, all the stuff that's going on. We might be willing and better willing to say this, Lord Jesus, will you speak to me? I need to hear from you. I need to hear what you're saying to me. And I believe this is a prelude to what's going to happen tonight when we're going to have a whole different atmosphere.